scheduled missile test to avoid making an already test situation even worse. Secretary of State Kerry left yesterday for the Middle East, but he'll be traveling on to Seoul and Beijing later in the week, hoping to get North Korea's closest ally, China, to help dealing with this growing crisis. That's where I want to begin here this morning. Joining me, Republican Senator from South Carolina, Lindsey Graham. Senator, welcome back to the program. You're just Thank back you. to the U.S. from being in the Middle East, and yeah. I want to ask you about Syria as well in just a couple of minutes. But let me start with North Korea and what it is we're dealing with. A couple of uh, headlines in the magazines caught my attention in The Economist and in The Week magazine is Kim Crazy, Korean Roulette. This war of words, escalation, are we headed toward a conflict with North Korea? I think what Bob bothers me the most is that the tolerance in South Korea for this kind of provocation is greatly, uh, is, you know, they're, they're not going to put up with this anymore. If there were a South Korean naval vessel sunk this year, anytime soon, or shelling of a North, South Korean island by North Korea, I think the new president of South Korea would be compelled to act. I think the North Koreans are overplaying their hands. And this administration is acting responsibly. I'm glad we're not doing the ballistic missile test. I'm glad we had the B-2s in the theater where they could see them. I'm glad we're telling our allies, South Korea and Japan, we literally have your back. And the North Koreans need to understand if they attack an American interest or an ally of this country, they're going to pay a heavy price. Let's talk about U.S. interests, and they're quite real in the region. Look right. at the map, first of all, to give our viewers some perspective. You've got Japan, you have Guam, where we had some uh, missile batteries uh, placed or moving toward North Korea, South Korea, and of course in the south, uh, in the southern part of that peninsula, you've got over 28,000 U.S. troops. So the danger is real if some kind of conflict breaks out between the north and the south. We are literally quite there in the middle. Uh, we're in the middle. I'm glad we're there with our allies. But the big difference to me is the politics in South Korea are changing by the day regarding North Korea. So if there's some provocation, it won't be business as usual by South Korea. I could see a major war happening if the North Koreans overplay their hand this time because the public in South South Korea, the United States, and I think the whole region is fed up with this guy. But what happens if there is some kind of conflict between the, the North and the South? That becomes a conflict with the United States, doesn't the, the, it? The North loses and the South wins with our help. That's what happens. And what about the rest of the region? You're talking about Japan? You're, you're talking about more nuclear weapons? In People, the well, uh, North uh, Japan and South Korea have not gone nuclear unlike the Middle East, because they trust us. As long as South Korea and Japan trust us to be in the fight, they won't go down the nuclear road. It's important that they always believe we have their back, and it's important that North Korea knows what happens if they engage anybody in the region associated with us, including our own troops. They lose. Before I ask you about the more, a little bit more about the U.S. response, who is Kim Jong-un? We put together some facts so people have some sense of him. It was his father, Kim Jong-il, who ran the country, uh, so he is his son. We don't even know his actual age. He's about 29 years old. Uh, he came to power in December of uh, 2011, uh, educated in, in the West. I know from talking to people at the White House, one of the big fears is miscalculation here. We well, don't really talk to the North. If you sold this as a movie uh, script, I don't think anybody would buy it. A 30-year-old guy whose father was born out of a mountain who had nine holes in ones the first time he played golf. This is a surreal place called North Korea, and I blame the Chinese more than anybody else. They're afraid of reunification. They don't want a democratic Korea next to China, so they're propping up 